here today to talk about habit formation in UI UX. Uh, so let's talk about what that means. So what exactly is a habit? Um, well, essentially, it's a model that we use to describe um, three things that are happening in a loop. Um, and these three things are a trigger, a action, and then a reward. And so an example of this would be like um, looking both ways before you cross the street. So I see a street, and that's my trigger. My action or my behavior is that I look both ways, and then my reward is that I don't get hit by a car. So <laughs> it's, a, it's a good uh, mental model to have. Um, <clears throat> and I've got a little schema of it here. Uh, so why am I talking about habits? Well, um, nowadays people are making so many apps that consumers have become addicted to trying new apps rather than um, sticking with one. And so retention is a huge issue. Um, something like 70 to 80 percent of apps that get downloaded from the App Store only get used once and never get used again. I'm sure you've all had that experience before. Um, as a consumer, it's important to understand habits because habits um, activate the pattern recognition part of our brain. That's how they get stored in our mind, rather than the decision-making part of our brain, which is why when you go on Facebook or when you check your social media sites, it's almost an unconscious behavior. So you're your brain doesn't know that you have an important presentation tomorrow to prepare for. It's just doing what it wants to do. It's just following a pattern. Um, so one place that really, one industry that really understands this is uh, the games and the gamification industry. Um, so gamification is essentially the concept that um, they're shortening the feedback loop so that your brain is more likely to recognize it as a habit. And they do this by giving you highly visual uh, feedback whenever you do an action. But um, in recent times, it's become a bit of a buzzword. And as you can see, the types of things that they recognize you for are becoming almost basically any action that you would do. Um, and so it's starting to lose its meaning. So uh, hopefully, we can dive into uh, some of the, the concepts behind the hood of habit formation and what that actually means rather than just doing badges. Um, so here, I'm training everyone to expect a habit loop diagram every three slides. Um, but actually, this is just a more detailed um, habit loop, and I took it from Nir Yao's book called uh, Hooked, How to Build Habit-Forming Products. Um, and so it's, it's just more relevant to application development. Um, you have the trigger, which can be external or internal. You have the action, um, a variable reward, which means that the reward is not always the same thing. And finally, investment, which is something that he's kind of added on to the habit model. And I'll talk more about what that means. Um, so start with triggers. So there's basically internal and external triggers. Um, we'll start with external. So in psychology, it's been pretty well documented that uh, extrinsic motivators are not as effective as intrinsic motivators for producing long-lasting change or producing uh, motivation to do something. So the analogous example is uh, parents giving their children $5 to do a math problem. They'll do the math problem for $5, but they definitely won't be doing as much as someone who genuinely enjoys math. Um, one good example of this is a website that you probably may have heard of, probably haven't heard of, called uh, Mahalo. And they were a questions and answers website that attempted to reward people with, mo um, with monetary rewards every time they wrote a good answer. Um, and so that got a lot of initial upfront attention, but it wasn't a long-lasting model because people felt like they were just trying to um, write answers for money, almost like a job at that point. And um, the ratio of getting a reward was so low that you never actually felt like you were going to win something. And so that fell apart and eventually was replaced by Quora. So Quora, people write answers on for more intrinsic motivators, um, such as the feeling of belonging to a community or the feeling of being valued for your responses, feeling like a subject matter expert about something. Um, other intrinsic tr triggers could be like boredom. You feel bored, so you do something. Or you feel lonely, and you do something. They're, they're usually more emotional or um, basically anything that's internally generated. Um, so the next thing in the loop would be the action that you want to take. And the idea here is just to reduce as much friction around whatever action you want your users to take as possible. Um, so make it as simple as possible. So now we're going to take a UI break and also add in some examples. So the first one, uh, a UI best practice, would be to expose all the, uh, all the options at once. Um, so instead of having an additional layer of 
um, actions that the user has to take to see what options they have. You just expose them all at once. So there's less, less um, friction or less frustration around that. Um, another thing that we sometimes forget is to design a case for zero entries, zero data entries. So if it's a brand new user, um, instead of just saying you have no data, we, we could give them a form or something so that they can start generating data. So it's the idea of building more cohesive um, story. <coughs> um, and then this one I really like. It's the idea of um, having a gradual incremented process sign up. So instead of just upfront saying, okay, you need to put in your email and your password before you can do anything, creating a bit of an experience and asking for some input from the user before you start asking for things. This builds more of a relationship with the user, and kind of a give, uh, give and take instead of just a take. Um, so now we're going to look at some real examples of sites that have designed their UI in a way to uh, account for less friction. So with Facebook, um, you can post a status, and on the status, it has all the things that you could ever want to share. Like you, you can share photos, you can share, um, you can tag certain friends in it, you can do videos. Um, you have Yelp, which um, gives you some pre-populated uh, ways to share your input. And you have Pinterest, which um, one of the actions they want you to take is to consume their content. And um, the way they do that is by having a cascading view with um, whatever row you're looking at, you see a little bit more of the next row. So it inclines to make you want to scroll through it longer. And to, um, they also have infinite scrolling so that you're just scrolling forever. Um, actually, to go back to that, there's a concept called an endowed progress rate, which um, is basically when they gave punch cards to people that had two punch cards already completed, they were 80% uh, more likely to finish collecting all the holes in that punch card. So the idea of pre-populating a form, kind of like the Yelp review, or just providing less friction makes people much more likely to complete an action. So now we talk about the reward, which has to be variable. Um, a lot of people think this is the most important part, but it's not necessarily, because it's just really the end of a habit cycle. So maybe the most memorable part, but I'm actually of the opinion that the first two, having an important trigger that people can relate to, an intrinsic trigger, and having a low friction action are probably more important than just having like a great reward. And that's one of the mistakes they made when they were trying to give out money. Um, so we're going to talk about some variable rewards. Um, so one example of this is, um, OK. Uh, one example would be treasure chests in games that are variable since you don't know what you're going to get from them. Um, another cool example is news feeds because the information on there is not always relevant. So you have to keep checking it in the hopes that you got like good information. You don't know what you're going to find there, right? So it's variable. Um, cool. And so now we're going to talk about investment. Um, so some examples of investment are uh, generating content and seeing how people interact with your content. Like people have viewed your content, you feel more appreciated. Um, writing content. Uh, signing up for a newsletter. And uh, jumped. And having a social network on the same app as you is important as well because it produces a higher cost of switching. Like if all your friends are on Facebook and they say, hey, why don't you try Google Plus? You're like, well, no one's using that, so I don't want to switch. Um, so that's an example of investment. So closing thoughts. Um, it's important to have a strong, like I was saying earlier, strong uh, intrinsic or extrinsic trigger, uh, reducing the amount of time that someone has to take to get to whatever action you want them to take, and then to reward and get them to invest in your application. All right, thank you. Done it.